Okay, did we uh, go over this earlier? I know we had the picture up, but did we talk about this top two notes? No? Okay. So I think that's probably where we'll start today. So we talked yesterday about how when the baby is forming in the womb, the bones are mostly cartilage, but as the baby grows and develops, it starts to form bone. Cartilage is the basically the outline of the blueprint for where bone is going to form. But at birth, most cartilage has been converted into bone, except for a few places. And the picture shows you where that is, you know, the growth plate, which is near the end. And then articular cartilage is at the end of the bone where it hits the other joints. The epiphyseal plate is another word for growth plate, so it's the same thing. And as the baby and the child starts to develop, you can see the bones start to shape. You know, originally it starts as a cylinder, then it starts to form projections on it to form the joints. So bones can grow in two ways. They can grow lengthwise, they can grow horizontally. Uh, when they grow lengthwise, what happens is cartilage forms on the outside. And it shows in number one where that happens. And that adds to the length of the bone. And then bone replaces cartilage at where number two is pointing. And with those two steps, that lengthens the bone. More cartilage forms, more bone forms below that to create a longer bone. And then same thing at the growth plate. Cartilage also forms right there. And as it happens, bone forms below that. No, um, I mean, you can. I mean, I guess it wouldn't be too hard to draw it, but I don't make you usually draw diagrams, but you should just understand the process. But yeah, I guess it would be it would be good to have in your notes just a rough sketch of that. I mean, just basically just a circle. And once the growth plate closes, your bones can't grow lengthwise anymore. Now, they can grow larger horizontally after the growth plate closes, but they can't grow lengthwise after it closes. Yes, um, step two is pointing to cartilage on the top part. And then step three points to the cartilage where the growth plate is. So there are just different locations. I mean, you see, so this is cartilage right here that forms compared to cartilage up there that forms. But the bone is still growing in the same process, just in different. Oh, yeah, but it's different locations. I mean, so right here, so cartilage forms up here. Bone starts to form right here. Those are steps one and two. And then for step three, you have more cartilage growing in this area. So 
So if the bone is growing on the ends, why does it? Why is more cartilage grown in the epithelial? That so it still makes it lengthen, right? Yeah. I mean, it still pushes it out. In both places, it's, it's being lengthened, both at the top and in the middle part. It, well, near the middle part. Like it's being lengthened here and right here. Okay. Does so, anybody need that still? And also on the growth plate too, they also replace that with bone as it grows. It doesn't show that, but you know, step four, which is not on here, um, could also show that bone is replaced in the growth plate as well as more cartilage forms down there. So that's bone growth. Bone remodeling is um, when the bone changes shape. And that can be due to, you know, as you develop from childhood to adulthood, as we saw in the other picture, bones make projections on them, which make joints form. Um, that could be one form of bone remodeling. Another form would be if you use your bones more, if you're active, they get stronger, they get thicker. And if you don't use the bones, then they get smaller. Bone remodeling would be that process too, when bones atrophy without being used or they get stronger and larger with use. So when bone remodels, um, it grows thicker in certain places. And that happens when osteoclasts, which are cells that uh, destroy the bone, take out the calcium and minerals from the bone so when bone is resorbed, what that means is it's broken down and put back into the bloodstream. So number one is pointing to a place where bone is taken away. So originally the bone was where the red outline was, but that part was taken away. And then down here in the middle part, bone is added. And that makes the bone grow longer horizontally. Appositional growth is the process of bones getting larger horizontally. Osteoblasts are the cells that lay down bone. They make, they, they grow bone and they make bone thicker. And as it happens in that area, as more bone is added to the outside, on the inside where the cavity is, the medullary cavity, bone is resorbed there. So bone is taken away right here where the red line is to make this hollow area larger. And as it's doing that, it's increasing this part out here and it makes the bone grow horizontally. So really it's just the cavity in the middle growing? That's, yeah, so the cavity in the middle is growing and that, that allows, so it's, it's, it can be thicker too as it grows. It depends on your activity, but it expands the cavity as well. So that makes the diameter of the bone larger. In order to grow bone, you need calcium and phosphorus. So if the body does not have calcium or phosphorus, then the bones, even if they want to, they can't grow in mass. Osteoclasts are the cells that grow bone. Osteoblasts are the ones that break down bone. So if you have more osteoblasts being active than osteoclasts, you lose bone and vice versa. When you're growing bone, you have more osteoclasts active and less um, osteoblasts. I'm uh, sorry, osteoblasts make bone, osteoclasts destroy bone. So you have more osteoblasts when you grow a bone and less osteoclasts when you're growing a bone. So 
everybody are these doing? All right, so calcium, as we mentioned, is a very important building block of bone. By controlling how much calcium there is in the bloodstream, that controls how much, how large your bones are and how much they can grow. Parathyroid glands release parathyroid hormone, PTH, into the blood when calcium levels drop in the body. So PTH takes out calcium from the bone. And as it does it, the bones get smaller. So when the body needs more calcium, it goes to the bones and takes out calcium from the bones. And that's the main thing that happens with PTH, but um, two other things happen too. It shows the kidneys hold on to more calcium and then increase vitamin D levels cause the intestine to absorb more calcium too. And those two things help increase the blood supply or the blood levels of calcium. Calcium is important for muscle contraction. And so if it gets uh, too high or too low, your body can't work properly, especially with the muscles contracting. So your bones are a storehouse for minerals like calcium. You don't need to write down um, that chart on the right-hand side. I mean, it, it's something that you don't have to worry about. It's just the left-hand note that you need to know. So parathyroid glands are behind your thyroid gland. So your voice box, your larynx is right above the thyroid gland. And the thyroid gland, if you look in the back of it, it has four parathyroid glands right here. Um, yes. And having messed up thyroid gland makes you like it definitely can. Yeah, thyroid controls your metabolism. So if it's not active, you can you can have um, larger weight. Um, or if it's too active, you can be very skinny. So yeah, thyroid glands control a lot of different things in your body. But yeah, it, it can definitely cause you to, to gain weight if it's not active enough. Um, PTH activates osteoclasts, bone destroying cells which break down bone and release calcium into the bloodstream. So that's what happens if calcium levels are too low in the blood, but if they're too high in the blood, that's called hypercalcemia, then just the opposite happens. Calcium goes from the blood to the bones and deposits on the bone. finish this slide? Which is a recap of what we talked about. I mean, I have to draw this down, but parathyroid gland in your throat, in the back, you have the four yellow dots on there. They control basically three main parts of the body. Um, the bone releases calcium to the bloodstream, kidneys release calcium to the bloodstream, intestine as well. 
So that's how it causes calcium levels to increase in the blood if it needs to. Okay, this is a different topic now, but bone remodeling, as I mentioned earlier, um, your bone is constantly being broken down and remade and rebuilt. And it shows you right here what that looks like. So an osteoclast, you can see it's a blue blob right here. That breaks down bone. And osteoblasts build up bone. So it's very common for a bone in one place to be broken into, whether it's because you have low calcium levels or because the bone needs to be remodeled and changed shape, or if you're not using it as much. And so with lower activity, your bone also is broken down. Um, osteoblasts lay down a new matrix. And as they do that, they become trapped in that matrix. So osteoblasts lay down calcium phosphorus layer and it's like cement that they become trapped in. The very top layer is the new layer um, where the purple is that you see. And then over time, as they harden, they become osteocytes. And they become the bone cells that make up the bone. So there's a few reasons why bone remodels. Um, one reason would be if you have low calcium levels. Well, or high too. So if you have low calcium levels, then the bone is going to be broken down. If you have high calcium levels, the bone's gonna be built up. Exactly, yes, yeah. So too much calcium in the blood, calcium goes to your bone and it helps build up the bone. And then also just um, the stress of bones, you know, the pull of gravity and muscles on the skeleton can increase bone mass. So weight bearing activities on bones, like walking on your legs, for example, um, it feels that stress, that pressure, and your legs are going to, the bones in your legs will become stronger in response to that stress. But if you were to stop walking, uh, then your bones are going to start to get narrower and narrower in your legs because without that stress from gravity, they're going to break down that calcium very quickly. And muscles on the skeleton too. So if you, if you do exercising that pulls the bones, that can also strengthen the bones as well. Uh, rickets is a disease when the bones don't calcify properly. Oh, do you need that last bullet point? No. Okay. So the bones don't calcify, then the bones stay rubbery. Have you ever put a chicken bone in vinegar and you've ever, um, the bone becomes really rubbery? Yeah. We're gonna do that if you haven't ever seen that before, but that's a bone without calcium. And so that's what happens with rickets. There's not much calcium in the bones and it becomes very rubbery. Um, so the bones are soft and they bend very easily. Um, he might have actually, I mean, it's, it looks like this. You can see it actually is kind of bent. Like you can, this picture right here shows that there are bends in the bone or breaks in the bone. Can they even really walk? Yeah, probably pretty hard to walk. Without a cane or a walker, it's probably pretty hard to. So this is um, this happens if you if you have too little calcium or vitamin D in your diet. It's not that common as it is over here because we get vitamin D and calcium in milk and all kinds of different wheat bread products. But other countries, it's it's more common to have this happen.
But vitamin D is important to take along with calcium um, because you can take calcium, all, you know, but without vitamin D, it can't be used in the body. So vitamin D allows you to absorb the calcium. So just straight calcium on its own is not useful to you. You need vitamin D along with the calcium to be able to use it. Um, we'll stop here for today as far as notes. Um, show you a short video that recaps what we talked about today. Then I'll give you some homework questions to work on. Okay, um, so for today for homework on page 141, um, just do seven through nine. Yes. Uh, I put them in the box in the other building for your mom. I didn't know you could come back here, and so they're over there. Okay, Yes. Does everybody have their worksheets turned in from yesterday? Oh, but did you, did you get them? Thanks, Miss Holly. You're welcome. Have a good day. You too. Yeah.